Hello everyone, welcome to the 21st episode of Draft Kings, the only podcast that gives you all the top level limited information you could ever need. I'm Shiloh and with me today, as usual, it's Tyler. What's up? Hey. Today on the episode, we're just going to be doing the Cracker Pack um, because we couldn't come up with a topic this week, so we'll just do the Cracker Pack and that's it for now. So this pack this week is Dragon's Maze, so let's get to the comments. Alright, first we got Simic Clue Stone, 3 mana for an artifact that taps for a green or a blue. Uh, and then you can pay a green, a blue, and tap it to, and sack it to draw a card. Clue Stones were pretty fun in, in, um, to draw cards with. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Um, right, Piker. Um, 1 red for 2 1 with first strike, and it attacks each turn of Fable. It's a fine little aggressive creature. Yeah. It's a piker. Mm-hmm. Hence Riot Piker. <laughs> yeah, it's a piker. Yeah. Uh, Drown in Filth. A green and a black for a sorcery. Uh, choose target creature. Put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. It, then that creature gets minus one, minus one until the end of the turn for each land card in your graveyard. Could potentially be good if you're playing a multicolored deck with a lot of guild gates. It's maybe. iffy. <laughs> yeah. Two mana m might kill something. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't play it. Yeah, most of the time it would just deal like minus one, minus one. Because oftentimes you don't hit more than like one or two land off of like, a. Uh, you're flip milling for four, four, and you might have some in your graveyard already if you're playing green black. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, it's still not good to pick. Not good to play. Alright, we got Oogle, uh, Sar, Gatekeepers. Three and a black for two, four. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you control two or more gates, uh, target creature an opponent controls gets minus two, minus two into the end of the turn. That's fine. Yeah, the Gatekeepers... It's got removal attached to it, which makes it, which makes it good. Yeah, the Gatekeepers were... Mm -hmm a big thing in the set because well at least in constructed they were like because with the mazes end deck being a deck you could run these gatekeepers and then every land you play like er, every time you lay one of these guys on the field you could kill something uh, something Pretty small much. yeah uh, these weren't weren't uh, necessarily played and constructed um but the gatekeepers like in general were meant for the, like uh, decks that run a lot of gates because if you don't have more than two then these aren't going to do anything so <laughs> yeah. yeah you need to be multi multicolored yeah um all right we got demir clue stone three for a uh, artifact that taps for a blue or black and you can pay a blue and a black and tap it and sack it to draw a card uh exact same thing as the simic one yeah it's, it's just fine middle pick draft card mm -hmm. in the right colors all right, Boros Mastiff, uh, one and a white for a two-two, um, with Battalion, um, and uh, whenever it and at least two other creatures you control attack, uh, Boros Mastiff gets lifelink until the end of the turn. I like this guy. Um, yeah, he's a he's a bear that has a chance to get lifelink. Yeah. All right. Pretty uh, aggressive too. Maze Abomination. Five and a black for a four five, with death touch and multi creatures, multi colored creatures you control have death touch. Funny to note that uh, most of the commons in here aren't actually uh, multi colored, or most of the creatures in the yeah. set at common are not multi colored. So this really yeah, doesn't so do not anything as in draft. Relevant in, <laughs> in, yeah, not really relevant in draft. Yeah, not as good as you think it would be, but it's still okay. Five I guess. toughness is pretty good in draft. Yeah. Blocks really well. Really, really well. Yeah. It always trades up. Mm hmm. Uh, Maze Glider. Uh, five and a blue for a 3 5 flyer with multicolored creatures you control gain half flying. Uh, same difference. I'd be more likely to pick the Glider over the Abomination because it has flying. Yeah, um, it can block but, more things. Uh, it's pretty much the same, same difference. Yeah, either or. <laughs> Uh, next we got Rakdos Cluestone. Three for an artifact that taps for a red or a black. 
Uh, you can pay a red or black, tap it and sack it to draw a card. Same as the other two. <laughs> yep. A lot of clue stones, a lot of mana fixing. Yeah, it's crazy how many showed up and, uh -huh. and it's because they're common. Yeah. They would always be like the last like five cards that wheel around the table and you're like, which clue stone do I need? <laughs> I don't remember. I didn't, yeah. I, I didn't draft much of this. Um, Cerulei Gatekeepers. Uh, three and a green for a 2-4. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you control two or more gates, you gain seven life. Uh, this is actually pretty good. Yeah, this yeah, was the one that really made an impact and constructed. Same. Well, uh, actually, the black one's probably better and limited. But, um, yeah, this is fine. Yeah. Gaining seven life isn't necessarily the best thing, but like in, in the constructed mazes end deck, this would just give you an extra turn, which is all you needed to kill them. Mm -hmm. Because with mazes end, you just keep getting the gates out every turn with two mazes ends on the field you just like put all right six gates and like nothing and then play this <coughs> and then gain seven you get another turn two more guild gates come on the field and then lay your fifth one or your uh um ninth one and then on the end of their turn search for the tenth and you win it was a quick deck and this was one of the main cards to keep you alive they uh, ran four of them I believe in constructed but anyways um that's it for the commons now we get to the uncommons try a lot better all right we got toil and trouble uh toil is a sorcery uh target player draws two cards and loses two life uh trouble is a sorcery trouble deals damage to target player equal to the number of cards in that player's hand um and together and uh it's Two and a black for toil, two and a red for uh, trouble, and you can, uh, it's got a fuse mechanic, you can, you can cast both halves of this card from your hand, uh, for paying the, the whole cost. So four and two, a red and a black? Yeah, you, you get to, uh, I like uh, that, personally, that I'd, personally, I'd just, I'd either, it's, it's good all around, it's a, yeah. it's, it's, it's a good card. The thing I'd use use it most for is toil probably, because it's like sign and blood or, or uh, some other cards that let you draw, for life. Well, um, almost all black draws yeah. use life for it. Um, the trouble half's pretty good too. Yeah. All right, uh, sin collector uh, one a black and a white for a two one. Uh, once in collector enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose an instant or sorcery card from it. Exile that card. It's the first uh, pick so yeah, far. <laughs> this is pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, just a great card. It's like, not, uh, what's something that you could, like, I, w I want to say thought seize on a creature, but it's not thought seize. Because it doesn't discard the card, it exiles it. Um. And it's not any card, it's instant or sorcery, but it's, it's that type of a thing. They reveal their hand and you choose a card from it, but on a creature it makes it that much better. Plus it's, it's aggressively costed too. I think this would have made a lot more, would have made uh, a lot more sense at two, a white and a black, but I like that they put it at three men instead of four. Alright, um, next we got Crazy's Incubation. Two, a green and a blue for an aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature can't attack or block, and its abilities can't, and, and its activated abilities can't be activated. Uh, you can pay one, a green and a blue, uh, and return Crazy's Incubation to its owner's hand to put two 1 1 counters on enchanted creature. It's cool, but it's really slow. Really slow. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I definitely uh, wouldn't pick this up. Yeah. Yeah, th I don't think there's really any way you could utilize it in limited because it is so no, slow. Um, Seven mana to even get just one ti one activation. Like, playing it and then using its ability, even throughout two turns, that's still too slow. Uh, no, I, I, I mean... Uh, you... You could potentially use this against uh, one of their creatures, and then uh, as it's about to die, you put this back in your hand, and then uh, put then you it on have another, another one yeah. of their creatures. Well, I guess yeah. yeah, you can keep their creatures down. It's just a, a yeah, good point. An arrest that sticks around. 
Yeah, but it, but it's still like really high costed. With with the rest was, the rest type of stuff is at like three. Mm -hmm. With this being at four, I don't know. If I would still pick it up or not. <laughs> you pick up sleep paralysis. That's true. And that doesn't even do the same thing, is it? Yeah, so yeah. That doesn't even recur. Yeah, maybe I would pick this up. But not first pick, definitely. <clears throat> It'd be mid to late in the pack. If it came around. But uh, those are on our uncommons. And now we get to our rare. Uh, Advent of the Worm. Uh, one, two green and a white. For an instant, put a five, five... A uh, green worm token onto the battlefield, and this this is definitely my pick. Yeah. Uh, five five at instant speed is nuts. It's funny. It's a green white card, but it's only a green worm. It's weird. They didn't make a green and white worm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This this was a um, card you'd pick for value too, because this thing was like what twenty bucks when it came out, and stayed uh, stayed pretty high because it was. An important card in the green white deck <laughs> in constructed yeah I, th I think it was yeah I mean that was in the pro tour winning deck for sure that one in less than 30 minutes three rounds <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah that's our pack for today um, and that's actually the episode so thank you all for watching you can follow us or follow me at least on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. It's shyguy768. You can follow Tyler. Uh, Tyler A. Hill 7918 on Twitter. The edge will on YouTube. Awesome. And also follow the group channel on Twitter at the Real Jacked UG, and also subscribe to the YouTube page, Jacked Up Gaming. Uh, we've got videos coming out there. But until next time, may you all draw well, but most of all, have fun.